Good morning, everyone. My name is Antonio Reis, as mentioned. Uh, I'm one of the directors at Optimal, um, and I was invited to, to be a moderator of this panel about intelligent materials. Uh, a quick introduction on myself. I have more than 20 years' experience in composites, developing advanced composite stru structures for uh, various industries, obviously the main focus being aeronautics, but also automotive, industrial applications, commercial goods, nautical, quite varied over the years. At Optimal, we, we focus in this area as well, so on the development and manufacturing of these kind of structures. I was invited by the organization to, to be a chair, to, to, to be a moderator of this panel about intelligent materials, which um, it's very interesting on the perspective that uh, uh, the more intelligent the materials are, the more efficient the airplanes be, the more uh, evolved the solutions will be, and the better we'll be able to maintain them and uh, to control their lifespan. And, um, so I think it's a very critical subject at this time because a lot of technologies are being developed around this and we have a very interesting panel to, to speak about that. Uh, we will start by making a quick introduction of each of the panel members uh, and then in the end we will discuss openly about this, uh, this subject. I was going to suggest, well, first about the members, we have Maria, <coughs> which is in Madrid uh, remotely. Uh, we also have Christophe, which is in the UK. Um, we have João next to me, uh, and we have Ricardo. And Ricardo is from Embraer. Uh, he will bring also the perspective of the of the OEM and the one which is closest to the to the end customer. He will speak in the end. Uh, so I suggest we start by Maria. Uh, can she start? Yes. Hello. Hello, Antonio. Hello, Maria. Welcome to the panel. Hello. Uh, thank you very much. I'm going to share a presentation with you. Can you can you see the presentation? Um, can we? Uh, what, I think we can now. Uh, not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're okay. Okay. Well, uh, good morning. Um, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to uh, and, and I will start uh, explaining in a few words what is FIDANC and what we do. FIDANC is a private non-profit uh, foundation and the members of the Board of Trustees belong to the Airbus Group, the Regional Government of Madrid, and the CDT, which belongs to the Spanish government initially. And later, two new members would include uh, the company Aciturri and M. Torres. The best way of summarizing what we do uh, is to explain our name, because Fidanz is the signal in Spanish for Foundation for the Research, Development, and Application of Composite Materials. Most of our projects are focusing the transport industry, mainly aircraft, but also the motif and railway. And in addition, we develop projects for in other sectors, uh, such as energy building and... Maria, can you hear us? No. Have we lost Maria? Maria? We developed a of, of large demonstrator. Uh, we have several machines for automatic layers. Yes. Uh, I think I think you are hearing us yes, probably. Yes, I can hear you. Do you hear me? Uh, with, with interruptions. C can you start again? Not not the whole presentation. We have seen the first slide already. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. In, in the, this slide, well, you can see that uh, I, I want to show that uh, the, the activity of plan is mainly focusing the intermediate and high TRLs, but some of our research is also in the lower TRLs. And uh, our strongest point is the manufacturing of large... 
for that we have several for can you hear me now properly it's fading it's fading a bit uh, but but carry on please yes we have also a, a laboratory which is uh, accredited by the ISO standard 17025 and by NACA to perform most of the of the test to composite materials at coupon level physical and mechanical test in the low tier RL research, uh, we are working in different research lines uh, relating to intelligence materials. Uh, for example, the functional material. And uh, I will explain later some of these research lines. And also, uh, we participate in researches uh, related to structural health monitoring. Our part the participation of Fidan is mainly uh, focused on the integration of the, the element uh, required for the SEHM. I will try to be quick because I think the connection is not very good. Uh, so, but, but well... Uh, we are listening to you, so carry on. Uh, okay. Uh, regarding the multifunctional materials, we are working mainly with graphene and graphene related to uh, uh, to introduce uh, in the composite materials. We are uh, from the graphene initiative, which, which is a, a, a huge uh, European initiative to to bring together the academic and the industry to do the, the graphene in the in the European society and in different uh, products. So our our work is uh, focused on the integration of these materials to improve the electrical and thermal conductivity, improve the service temperature, uh, reduce the water absorption. So we are integrating graphene in in carbon fiber and forced composite. Uh, in this project, which is part of the graphene flux, and it goes to the uh, uh, anti I think it's a, an important problem in the aircraft industry uh, because it, it's uh, uh, um, and it requires maintenance and cost. In a, in a development for an active anti ice We're also working with um, a passive uh, anti ice system in Finland. The, the, the difference is that the system requires an energy input, while the passive system does not. And in this case, in the passive system, we are modifying a pane to provide a new functionality, not, not only protective or decorative, but to, uh, to, 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 to make it easier the, the ice removing from the surfaces. Okay. Also related to paint modification, uh, developing of, of mixophobic so, so the objective is to uh, avoid the the accumulation of residues from the insects that impact on the uh, leading edge, the, the surfaces of the aircraft. And we're also working on in metallic coatings. On the one hand, we are working in the PVD technology. And this is a very well uh, technology for well known technology for metallization. We are applying it to composite materials, in particular. Uh, and now we are working with thermoplastic composites and we developed a, a vacuum chamber for thermal evaporation using resistive heating and we were able to obtain a, a, a good copper uh, coating. The objective is the protection for the lightning strike protection. Uh, alternatively, we are with non-vacuum methods that could allow us to 
to code uh, larger surfaces. So we are uh, exploring two different alternatives, hybrid coatings containing a copper and also electroless. The, these two techniques which would allow us to obtain a, a conductive coating without using a vacuum chambers. And also more related to the intelligent structures, we are part of the Enhanced uh, Innovative Training Network, which is a, a project for the development of intelligent prognosis and health management in composite stru structures. This is a, a new project that we, we have just started. And we, we here we, we will try to integrate different types of sensors for monitoring the, the health of the structure and to be able also to, to predict failures and um, definitively uh, to, to reduce the cost. So this is a few words, uh, our work that we are developing in Infidank related to this topic. Okay. Thank you, much, Maria. Thank you very much, Maria. Um, we will now go to Christoph, I would suggest, for his presentation. Uh, try, to, try to be a bit more synthetic. We have already gone through a quarter of our time, a third of our time, so if you can be a bit, so we can have a few minutes in the end to discuss. Thank you very much. Of, co of course. Uh, thank you, Antonio. And uh, let me just upload quickly my slides. Um, so, uh, is. Uh, are these slides already uh, yeah. live? Uh, they are fine. Uh, so th thank you. Um, so my, my name is Christoph Kozio. I'm a professor of composite engineering at Cranfield University. Um, and my experience, um, uh, my background is in material science uh, and engineering. I have uh, over 20 years experience working especially in uh, carbon-based uh, materials. At, uh, in our center, uh, the Enhanced Composites and Structure Center in Cranfield, we've been working for over 25 years with, uh, with aerospace uh, and supporting uh, some of the largest projects that, uh, that were out there uh, across the sector. And we have been recently working um, uh, extensively on uh, the introduction of advanced materials. Uh, we are look looking at the future of composites, composite engineering, uh, but also uh, the important topic of sustainability in composites, materials, and manufacturing um, of these structures. Um, and above of all of this, we have to look at the cost model, of course, uh, so that it is it's much better affordable. Um, there are some major efforts that are going into multifunctionality, uh, and that's what I wanted to highlight uh, here. Multifunctionality of materials is very important, um, and for this, we are specifically uh, uh, looking at carbon-based nanomaterials, so uh, materials like carbon nanotubes, graphene, and other 2D materials uh, that bring the uh, additional element besides just uh, performing mechanically uh, delivering tensile or compressive uh, strength to the, in, in the structure, but they also bring the, uh, the element of uh, sensing of power generation uh, as this is more and more uh, re required and demanded uh, from, from the industry. Uh, we are putting a lot of efforts on uh, quality control and uh, working closely with uh, standardization uh, uh, groups, um, uh, ISO and uh, uh, British Standard Institute, to make sure that we do have standards behind these materials so that the industry uh, can absorb it uh, at the uh, right sort of level, quality, uh, and quantity, of course, and uh, whatever the material, whenever the transfer is, the use of these materials, there is a, uh, obviously appropriate certification as well in place. Um, so uh, the, uh, the other thing is the scale of production, and it is important because obviously mostly when we do research in, in, in the university, you know, we are looking at at a specific sort of uh, a group of class of materials and, and quantity, but we have to be mindful of, you know, where would the large volume come from? So we work with manufacturers of these materials and trying to bridge the gap between manufacturers and the users. 
an here's here's an example of a structure uh, what we would call as a multifunctional uh, composite scheme we are looking at the cross section of a composite with carbon fibers resin present present there uh, with the layer of a carbon nanotube film um, integrated as part of this composite uh, giving not just the uh, the mechanical performance that, which is expected from this structure but also bringing the element of um, uh, lightning strike protection uh, and, and enhancing the EMI shielding uh, improving uh, all the elements of the icing uh, removing uh, improving overall safety um, safety sort of aspects of the structure um, why we are going this way is is that you know there there are extreme uh, environments that are happening with regards to the weather uh, so there, there there are more and more expectations of structures to perform at much much uh, high levels uh, of performance uh, but there is also expectations on this functionality of the structure that it's no longer just as i said uh, giving the mechanical performance uh, but also uh, giving the ability to generate power, maybe to power sensors, uh, some electronics. So we are now expecting from the structure to to generate uh, some level of power uh, that that will go back into into it or, or make it functional. Uh, the structure is now also looking into its sort of uh, options of self repair, self awareness, self sensing. So again, it is an important to bring materials that are, that that carry these capabilities. But we have this additional uh, element of sustainability, uh, and uh, that comes from legislations uh, which are popping out the um, the um, agreements uh, that, that is around climate that we are all exposed to. Uh, so we are, we are much more mindful of making sure that the materials uh, are sustainable um, also down the road. Uh, before we consider them for the integration, uh, there are there are some big efforts on hydrogen uh, entering uh, the aerospace, uh, and we are very much involved in this. Uh, and again, smart materials, multifunctional materials are key to make these structures uh, real, uh, to uh, to ensure that there is safety behind, um, uh, as well as that it's affordable uh, to make this uh, this transition happen. And my final point is that uh, the circular economy aspect is, is critical. We have to go this way uh, because uh, we will be struggling to really reach the commitments on climate uh, change uh, th that are within the EU. Uh, and we need to be mindful, obviously, of what sort of materials we'll be using uh, in the future before we bring them to the structures. So creating that circular pattern is uh, absolutely critical for us, uh, and I think we have to be very, very sort of mindful for this. Um, thank you, Antonio. Oh, I say thank you. Thank you for the presentation, very clear. Um, I will now pass the word to João uh, to present his work. Um, please. Okay. Is it working? Okay. So, can you hear me? Yes? Ah. Okay. Good morning. Good morning to our colleagues. Uh, that are in the computer, let's say in the network. It was really nice to see your work and to see how, let's say, uh, how far and how close we are. Basically, I'm just going to present a short summary of the, the work we have been doing and some considerations which uh, uh, I think are actually interesting and, and maybe will uh, be taken for, for further discussion in this panel. So I, I come from the University of Aveiro. It's a small city uh, in the center of Portugal, near the coast. And uh, I, I'm part of a uh, SECOP group, so this uh, uh, surface en engineering. So I'm more working on the modification of the surface and, and, uh, and coatings technology. Uh, and I'm from the Department of Materials. Uh, uh, and ceramic engineering and together uh, with the other departments we are part of a larger associate laboratory in, in the university called CISECO, our Institute of Materials, which is one of uh, uh, international renowned centers for material science and engineering. So uh, just a, a, a bit introduction about myself. Uh, I'm, I, I'm currently professor at the Department of uh, Materials and Ceramic Engineering. 
I've been working in the coding developments for more than 10 years and uh, uh, I've also been one of the founders of uh, a company devoted to the smart additives for coatings technology. Uh, just a few indications of the research lines we have uh, in, in our department. We have ceramic materials for electronic ap application, energy conversion systems, thermomechanical composites, but we also have some, some other uh, areas going towards biomaterials, recycling and valorization of industrial byproducts, and of course corrosion and science engineering. So uh, we, we have seen, in, 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 I, I don't want to go deep in the technical details because there, there is not much time, just uh, when we are talking about intelligent materials, at least in our uh, action, in our uh, field of research, we actually devote more to the surface, as I was saying, and to the coatings development. And basically, uh, we, we heard uh, quite often the word multifunctional, and actually it's like it, what it means. Uh, if you have just a conventional coating, a layer that protects a, a kind of substrate, uh, it, it, it can give just passive barrier against the uh, uh, against the surrounding environment, can also give decorative effects. But of course, in high performance applications, like in the case of aeronautical, you have to have higher performance. And for that sense, you have to also to work on the additives, on changing the formulations to have extra functionalities. Some of them are just highlighted here in this uh, simple scheme, like active corrosion protection, when we are talking about especially metals. Uh, adhesion, uh, improvement, wettability changes as we saw in, in previous presentations from our colleagues in the panel. Also corrosion sensing and detection, impact detection also on, on CFRP composites, anti-falling and so on. Uh, what we try to do is that these additives actually are uh, responsive to the surrounding system. So stimuli responsive, let's say, and when we are using this sort of additives and they actually work for these functionalities responding to the environment. We call them smart coatings or intel intelligent coatings, let's say. Um, the approach is relatively simple in the way we are showing here, although, although in practice is much more complex. So if you have a metal alloy or a metallic substrate, uh, quite often you have different layers applied on the substrate to confer some of them more to promote adhesion between the metal and the subsequent organic coatings. Uh, other coating layers to, to give the aesthetics that is necessary, but you also need, for instance, primers and surf surface treatments that actually have uh, active corrosion protection against degradation of the metals. What we try to do is actually uh, either modify directly the surface with the growing or, or the growth of uh, films or application of organic coatings with these kind of yellow spheres you can see here in this scheme. Uh, these are what we call micro and uh, nano scaled reservoirs or containers for the active species that will work on the, against the degradation. And then we have to try to modify, functionalize these kind of uh, reservoirs in a way that they store the active species and only release them when triggers from the surrounding, like uh, changes in the temperature, presence of uh, sodium chloride, salts, uh, degradation of the coating organic matrix by UV uh, exposure or temperature and they start releasing the species to start protecting metal when the coating fails itself. And we use uh, different kinds of materials from inorganic structures to polymeric microcapsules. So uh, basically w when we are talking specifically about the aeronautical sector and we have been participating in several uh, European and national projects devoted to these topics uh, there are some trends related to uh, improving the anti-corrosion uh, protection systems, the organic paints, let's say. Uh, it's actually necessary to replace the conventionally used uh, cor anti-corrosion pigments, uh, mostly because of the environmental and the health safety hazard hazardness uh, associated. Uh, but th the same kind of technology is being used also to modify the coatings themselves and also support on this called structural health monitoring, like uh, there is for composites and, and also for metals. So, for instance, in, in this picture here, we have just a comparison between a coating with, with, with one of our additives that is turning pink, simply, and another that is not turning at all, uh, under exposure, exposure to salt spray, for instance, and basically the coating is changing color when corrosion is occurring. So, kind of corrosion detection uh, at early stage, uh, uh, kind of giving support to, to the 
maintenance uh, and repairing uh, structures. We are also developing, as I, I said, surface spray treatments based on this control smart release of uh, uh, corrosion in inhibitors to protect, to act as a, a first barrier protective layer and then to apply uh, subsequently the organic coatings. And now probably some of the, these things uh, that can be then later taken by, by, by Antonio. Some of, of the challenges and opportunities. One of the points, of course, uh, some of our colleagues here in this panel are, are working with composites, of course. We are not manufacturing composites. We are trying to address uh, surface properties. In terms of the hybrid structures, because actually nowadays uh, with aircraft, we have a multitude of materials combined itself. So to actually achieve uh, uh, the optimal uh, combination of performance with, uh, uh, with let's say, uh, w weight reduction and, and so on. So when you have hybrid structures, you still find eventually even more complex problems. For instance, when you have uh, um, a, a, a carbon-based conducting substrate connected to a metal, it will enhance the corrosion of the metal itself. So there is also other issues to be solved and, and sorted out in the context of corrosion. Uh, in terms of the maturation of these technologies, these smart additives, uh, they are being developed in, in, in by different groups and, and already several startups and spin-offs are, are trying to, to stand out and, and, and try to mature the technology. But this maturation of technology needs always to be done with, uh, together with the industry, not only the, the paint producers, because they actually need to incorporate these additives in their, in their own complex formulations, but also together with the, the end users, actually to validate this kind of performance. And of course, as it was said before by Christoph, one of the aspects when we are working in material science and engineering is actually at the design level of the materials, take already in consideration uh, the, the circular economy, uh, or, or let's say, how, how it will or how we will get the materials in the end of the life and if they will still have value and think about designing the materials in a way that we can either close this, this, the, this, the circle, let's say, or actually find a way of uh, reusing these materials for uh, a equivalent added value application. So that's pretty much what I wanted to say. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So last, uh, Ricardo. Ricardo, as I mentioned, is from Embraer, Embraer Group. Um, is bringing the perspective of the OEM uh, and uh, how all these technologies can be integrated into the aircrafts of today and the future. Uh, I first and foremost, Ricardo, very nice picture on your background. Uh, like it a lot. Um, are you there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I, I would I would I would try to 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 try to. Um, to close the subjects we can discuss here around three main topics and I was keen to get your perspective from the industry. Um, being the first, the, the intelligent materials in terms of structure, so a structure which can uh, monitor its loadability, its capacity to carry load. I sometimes sometimes try to compare them with human bodies, that uh, when you have uh, some damage in your human body because you are hurt or a small scratch or something, you immediately know, your nervous system knows that. Will airplanes of the future be the same? Will they be able to, to understand they have a damage and tell that to the operators uh, and in advance um, allow flights to continue or to stop? Um, that's the first perspective. The second is in the circular economy. So circular economy, uh, Christoph mentioned about it, and uh, we all make loads of waste. We all get uh, very disappointed with the treatment the waste gets nowadays. We send away to, to, to waste bins and to, um, to, to, to storage, let's call it this way, uh, huge amounts of materials which could be reused. Uh, they are not reused. Will our industry one day be able to pick up on something of those materials? Not only the materials we produce ourselves, like the waste that's from our production process, from our industrial processes, but also the human waste, the typical human waste, not of course, speaking of plastics, paper, uh, garments, all of that. Will we be ever be able to use that for our planes in the future? Uh, and, last and, for, and lastly, the, the coating side. So how will the coatings um, affect us? I was very interested on the, the example of Joan of uh, being able to detect corrosion uh, from, the out, from an outside paint. That's, that's a, a big change because there was always the concern in the past that you don't know what's under your paint. And if the paint can help you, then the paint is really being intelligent and help you on the maintenance of your aircraft. So around these three main topics, could you give us the insight of the industry? Yeah, well, 
thanks, thanks Antonio, and, and thanks Maria, Christophe, and Joao for for this uh, layout of of your work and, and all the people there. Um, I, I will try. I think I can join uh, question your last point with your first point, in a way that uh, they they approach the. Uh, this enhancement of, of our environment, uh, the objects of our, the engineered uh, objects of, of our environment from, from different points or, or showcase in their different ways. I think your, your, um, your metaphor of, or analogy with the, with the human body is like um, where we are trying to go at. Uh, as as a as a species together we are we are learning and, and building on the work of uh, each other to to arrive at that point of analogy i i don't know how fast we will go there but uh, like william gibson said the future is already here not evenly distributed and so in fact um we have already uh, what you asked like um um, PHM uh, systems or condition-based uh, systems. So you take the knowledge that you have about the health of the structures and like going to the doctor, you say, hey, uh, put that part or replace that part or uh, we have to take care of this structure, be it an airplane or a, or a wind uh, mill or something like that. But we are, we are not there at that full image of the, of the human body. So uh, with the coatings, it's nice. It's like corrosion or something else. You have a bruise, or for instance, for composite, which is quite difficult to to identify if you have a damage in the inside, like a lamination, and, and you know about that, um, you don't see it with the naked eye. So these sort of technologies was will be really really interesting. And I think the point that I would like to to couple is that. Um, I think uh, Maria and, and Christophe and Joan uh, touched very important points, which is we are increasing the number of, uh, of complexity and uh, emergent behaviors and events. More, more stuff are getting into contact and we don't know what happens from there. There is, we cannot predict everything. And so I think we are, we are in large or, or being driven to or it's more urgent for for uh, better cooperation among all, all these players and that's how we play a part as as, as integrators the, the large-scale integrators that maria uh, spoke about i mean you are not just in the lab developing a, a new material because you want to increase the tenacity or the uh, uh, load bearing or something to interact with the environment and we are speaking about when we are speaking about these multifunctional intelligent materials we are mainly driven towards a meeting of the physical with the digital uh, way so to to deliver that vision of the human body basically you are thinking about a, a structure that have a digital IT infrastructure behind to connect this to collect the data to analyze it and so on and so you will have uh, you suddenly you will try to understand that you will have uh, cybersecurity issues also. You have the, the operations, and so there is this contact between the physical, the digital, the, the human layer, and then at least uh, trying to get back to you the, the environment, the circular economy. I'm quite um, uh, worried uh, about it, how we are going to to, to make it. Uh, there are a bunch of different projects, and, and already you can recall cover uh, a lot from a from a, an aircraft but we are far from being happy and increasing reuse or a recycle must be a, something that we we drive to us as industry and that um, we do in fact need also to focus on these questions of standardization and, and scale and have projects that look into that and and the demonstration of that because we are reaching the, the limit of the planet, right? And this is a, a, a big concern. And I, I would like to take the last point, uh, if I may, of uh, something that Maria mentioned, and, and I think it's very, very important, which is training, is to bring new people uh, into the capacity and understanding of these new materials and put them together in, in multi-functional um, multi, uh, teams with different expertises so they learn to collaborate 
better and work together better. I think that's the critical point, all of us working together for this. And so uh, closing up, I think we are already having examples of uh, the questions that you made. We are already taking uh, data from, um, from, from systems, increasingly from structures. I think in the structures part, we are still way, way behind from what is doing in, in systems to better manage our assets, to make them last longer, which is another way to think about the environment is not is to make stuff last longer so we can kind of repair and 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 so on and i think this opens the the avenue for this a great contribution on 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 that so we use less resources in the end so we have to also increase our life cycle abilities to to forecast what is the true impact of putting these things into into operation and, and to development i know i i kind of sprinkler around your, your questions, but uh, ah. I, I'm getting back to you. It was great, Ricardo. It was great. Thank you very much for your contribution. Uh, well, we now have to go probably the, the, the American way in regards to the presidential debates. We have one minute for each, so I'll make a quick question to Maria, Christophe and João, and then we'll probably make the final closing statement. Um, so Maria, you, you are also very much involved with the, with the OEMs and close to the, to the, to the application. How, how do you see this, um, the evolution of these intelligent structures coming to everyday planes? We know they're already there, partially, but uh, in deep, like the human body analogy, as I mentioned. How, how far are you away from that? Well, uh, I'm, I'm not sure exactly, but I, I think we are, are yet. I think it it's necessary uh, a lot of work to integrate the systems to to collect the information and also to uh, to treat that information and not only to use it to know what uh, happened but also to be able to predict and i think we have to learn uh, a lot I, I'm not sure really if something is uh, something is being used, but okay. Hopefully, uh, yeah. In, in the future, we will able to we will be able to to make this intelligent uh, aircraft to to tell us about their health. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we are a few years away. Still, it's going to go probably an evolution step. So step by step, we are going to get there over a, probably a decade or so. I would imagine. Uh, Christoph, in your uh, in your presentation, you showed a slide which, uh, for me, was extremely interesting because it's a subject I've always been revisiting, which is you show um, the typical human waste being transformed into advanced products like uh, airplanes. Do you think that's feasible? Because um, do you think we all? For a, I'll give a simple example: the same material which makes our garments, uh, the same base material, the same base material which makes carbon fiber. Will we, able, will we ever be able to make it go around and go from garments to carbon fiber, uh, going back to the base polymer? Is this feasible? Do you think this is technological, something we can do? Because that would open a perspective of recycling we don't, recycling we don't have nowadays. Uh, absolutely, Antonio. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a very important question. And I think you know, it is in our hands to make it happen in a way. Um, and I can tell you that there are projects that are already going, for example, from cotton to carbon fiber. You know, so people are looking at how do we change the source of, uh, you know, raw materials uh, into high performance structures that we are using. Um, and if you look at carbon fiber anyway, you know, we are starting with polymers that not necessarily have the performance that, you know, they are you know, very weak structures if you were to use them. So, and, but we are getting to carbon fiber because of the technology behind to carbonize it, to get it to that structural level. And that's what we have to do. Again, it is all about innovation in materials that is ahead of us. It is about the technology that we have to implement to turn waste into a high performance material. It's not about taking waste and creating sort of a low grade structure. It's actually about creating a high performance structure that is probably even better than carbon fiber. That's what we are trying to do. And we are not just looking at, at uh, uh, material waste, but also bio waste. So we are looking, for example, how 
methane can be taken from the bio waste and turned into a high performance material like carbon fiber or even better than carbon fiber. And that is what is in our hands. And that's what is critical, I think, that we need to sort of put enough attention to deliver. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We are closing. Just a quick question to João. So your research, um, how do you see your research? What do you need for your research to go from the test bench in the lab to the real airplane, to the real application? What does universities lack on that side? Or what do you need as a research group? Uh, well, uh, actually, uh, although we are, let's say, com comparatively to uh, other colleagues working uh, or starting in a lower TRL and trying to go up, it also opens uh, uh, other opportunities for us. Uh, certainly, uh, the, the collaboration in, uh, in projects with different partners that, uh, in, the, in, in a kind of value, uh, chain value, uh, where we can actually select the, uh, the best materials go per, for prototyping and validation in, in relevant conditions. That's, that's the key because you need to keep applied research and fundamental research still being developed. Otherwise, mm -hmm. some of the issues that are being here discussed will not be solved only with the applied, let's say, engineering aspects. Mm -hmm. on, the, on the other hand, it opens also a perspective for uh, finding, uh, like taking, take, taking the words um, uh, that, that were mentioned before, uh, this kind of combination of uh, multidisciplinary teams is also a very interesting thing because, for instance, you can develop a coating uh, for, for protection of a metallic substrate that is used in uh, aircraft, but you can face not exactly the same challenges, but some of them in the sea, in a ship hull. Yeah. So there are combinations here of, of things that ca ca issues that can be not exactly uh, uh, um, solved uh, only for one field. They yeah. can be a spillover of knowledge. And at the same time, working with other teams with totally different uh, 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 backgrounds. For instance, all the materials that we are trying to develop at, at nano, nano scale, uh, we are trying to validate them from environmental impact. If we are affecting, for instance, the, the organisms in the aquatic systems or so. So yeah. I, I think it comes uh, uh, this kind of comprehension and, and uh, uh, putting teams fr with different backgrounds right in the beginning of the research uh, and, and coming up with novel ideas. For instance, one of the things that was mentioned was materials and digital. Mm -hmm. I would probably even add, although it's not my area of expertise, but I would bring biotechnology and the living organisms together mm -hmm. to this uh, topic because certainly there is a, a, a complexity in the biological uh, world that uh, uh, can be brought and probably enhance some of the things we are trying to develop. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Well, we are two and a half minutes uh, out of our schedule. Thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure, at least from my, my side. Thank you, everyone online, and uh, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.